So here we are. We have this polynomial that we wanted to know the zeros of. Uh, in the previous section, we had been given a zero to start with, the starting point. And now we're not. So where do we get those? How do we get started? How do we get rolling? How do we factor the, uh, factor the constant? OK. So remember, we got plus or minus for each factor, right? Because if we do negative 1 times negative 24, we get 24. So we got to include those negatives. Um, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 12, 24. Did I miss any? No. OK. So what is this thing? What is this list? What's that? Possible zeros. Possible zeros. Uh, I have to learn last names a lot better than I do uh, and how to alphabetize things. Okay. So possible zeros. We can possibly, uh, one of these can possibly be a zero or several of them could be. So now how do we start to find out whether these are zeros? Um, guess a number and do synthetic. Guess a number and do synthetic. Well, we're doing two things, right? This is synthetic division. It's also right, synthetic substitution. It's synthetic substitution. It's synthetic division all at the same time. If we look at it in the synthetic substitution way, after I write all this down, when we get all done, this number right here will be the number that is the y value, or maybe this x value. Okay. How about? Um, Synthetic division. What are what division are we doing when we do this synthetic division? What are we taking what and dividing it by what? Yeah. Dividing the whole entire thing by x plus one. Dividing the whole thing by x plus one. Yeah. Now we're dividing the whole thing by x plus one. So uh, we'll find out if negative one is a zero, and we'll find out at the same time if negative one is zero, then x plus one will be a factor. Okay. So bring down the one. And one, one, six, six, twenty, negative twenty, twenty-four, negative twenty-four, and zero. Okay, so what did we just find out? That negative one is a zero. And also, what else did we find out? The x plus one is a factor. Okay. The x plus 1 is a factor. What does that mean? What does it mean that x plus 1 is a factor? You multiply it by 1. If you plug it into the formula, that's what's meant by negative 1 is 0. What's meant by x plus 1 is a factor? Say again? Um, if you factor after you find one of the zeros. Uh-huh. Um, if you factor after you find one of the zeros. Then, like, you can find, like, another zero. Oh, okay. But, yeah, that's true. That's what we're going to continue on to do. But when I say that, that x plus 1 is a factor of this, what does it mean? Um, that means that, so, like, Well, that, they're equally true that x plus 1 is a factor and negative 1 is a 0. But what can I do with x plus 1 since it's a factor? Um, multiply. Yeah, you can multiply it by, by um, the numbers up there and then like. By this. Yeah. And, and this will be 1 what? Um, one. x to the third. x to the third. And then um, plus 6x squared. Right. So x plus 24. And we got that zero remainder, okay? And uh, um, so then we're gonna what we really want to do is continue on and find the zeros, the remaining zeros of this thing. So, but just a second before we do that, I just want to talk about um, 
something else that's commonly done that ultimately kind of leads to a dead end. Okay? And that is, if we just do this again, the synthetic substitution, and make another guess, 1, 7, 6, 44, 24, right? and guess negative 2, which will work. We'll find another 0, possibly, kind of running a risk here. Maybe we'll find another 0, maybe we won't. But if we, if we do it that way, you could try all of these, and you'll only find negative 1 and negative 2 work. Okay? But here's the question. How many zeros could this polynomial have? Four. Could have four. Why? Fourth degree. Okay. Because uh, the fourth degree, it might have four zeros. Now, it is possible that negative one and negative two are the only zeros that this polynomial has, but we can't say for sure. Because all we've done is, is plug in negative 1 and negative 2 and found out that they were. A okay. um, couple different possibilities. Negative 1 could work two times. Does that make sense? Two different times. That means that when you factor all this out, possibly you can have x plus 1 times x plus 1. Right? That's two factors of x plus 1, meaning that you could set this equal to 0 and get negative 1, set this equal to 0 and get negative 1. And the same with negative 2. Negative 2 could be just 2 of the zeros. Right? Maybe we could multiply all this out and we would get that, x, you know, the original in black there. Um, and this approach here is not a way to, uh, to for sure verify that. Okay? So rather than Making another guess using this polynomial, we use this polynomial and treat it like it's a brand new problem. Okay? It's a brand new third degree polynomial that we need to know the zeros of. Another way of saying what I just said is this. So just imagine that. We haven't done anything up, uh, up to this point. And I've just given you this as the problem. And I just say, find the zeros of this polynomial. It's exactly what we need to do. It's, a, it's the same thing. So how do we go about finding the zeros of this polynomial? What's that? Who said something? The factors of 24. Right? If this were the polynomial that you wanted to find the zeros of, we use the rational zero test, and we do the factors of 24. Um, so it's the exact same thing again. So we have the exact same list because we have the same constant. And we go again. So let me just move this to the side and show you something that can kind of save time and space. Well, if you're going to make guesses on this using synthetic substitution, I'm just going to write out these numbers like this, probably without a zero. And you're going to set up the synthetic substitution and go from there. Okay. Do we know a zero that will? Negative two. Negative two. Mm -hmm. So bring down the one. Zeros. What zeros have we found? Negative one, negative two. And now, how do we find some more yeah. zeros? What's that? Okay, you could factor it. Okay, think about factoring. Um, has anybody tried to factor this? Yeah. How did it work out? Well, we have to do the quadratic formula. 
Okay, so it doesn't factor. Uh, and when we can't factor quadratics, we can use the quadratic formula. So we just up, we fill out the quadratic formula here. Minus B. And what's B? Four. Four minus four. what squared? Four squared. Minus four times one times twelve. Two AC. Two A. Okay, two times one. Okay. Um, all right, and so what we what what do we find out when we do this? It's an imaginary number. It's an imaginary number. What what about the quadratic formula it tells us that we, we wind up with a quad, an imaginary number? The negative in the square root. So just if we just paid attention to the to the square root. We get 16 minus 48, they give us negative 32, and that's, so what is, why is that important? True, I guess you can't in, in certain circumstances, like what about this, this problem? It tells us that we're not allowed to have negatives in the square root. We're looking for the real zeros. Um, and these are not real zeros, okay? But, I mean, at this point, we're done. We just found out that the other, how many zeros does the quadratic formula find? Two. How do you find those two zeros? The plus or minus, okay? Um, the plus or minus tells us that there's two zeros. We just found out the two zeros from the quadratic formula, from this, from this quadratic, are imaginary, okay? Um, so we could be done. We can say that the zeros are negative one and negative two. Um, so we could be done. X is negative one, X is negative two, these are the two zeros, okay? Um, but just for the sake of practice, let's simplify this, because you know what's gonna happen in 5.7? Imaginary, Imaginary numbers will be possible zeros. We expand our horizons to all possible kinds of numbers. Okay. The good news is that there's not a whole lot of change between what you've done and what you're about to do. It's just now don't reject the imaginary zeros and use the quadratic formula. Okay. So how would you deal with the square root of a negative? So the square root of negative one is i. Okay, so we have the square root of negative one is i times the square root of 32. So we get to write that as a oh, positive. Okay. And then, can we simplify the square root at all? How do we do that? Wait. Uh, you take four out of it. You take four out of thirty-two. Yeah. Why four? Because uh, it's a perfect square. Because it's a perfect square. Like it. Okay. What's that? It's over eight. It's over eight. Yeah. Because two times four. That's two times. Did I pick? No. That's right. That's right. No. Two times four. That's right. Oh, it's two a. Yeah, a was one. I was wrong once, so I'm going to be sure you check up on me here. Okay, uh, so, so Riley says we can take the 4 out of it, because 4 is a perfect square. Then Dakota says we can go bigger with 16. 16, also a perfect square. 16 is a bigger factor, which means that the, the rest of it may be, will be as simple as possible. Right? 16 times 2, square root of 16. Square root of two. Okay. So four. So we got uh, negative four plus or minus four i root two over two. Yeah. 
then we can simplify all of these, all three of these terms, right? Terms to be separated by plus and minus. Okay, so all three of these terms have a two in common. So negative two plus or minus two i root two over one, but if you write it over one, you write it down. Yeah. Can you pull up a little bit? Sure. Questions on that, number 15? That's it. That's it? Well, what is the, the, the answer for number 15? Minus 1 and minus. Negative 2, negative 1. Not minus. He always says that. What? Not minus. He says minus 1 and minus 2. No. Who, Dakota? Yes. They're not really the same. Well, kind of. Um, okay, so the answer to 15 is negative 2 and negative 1. Those are the zeros. If we were in 5.7, the answer would be negative 2, negative 1, negative 2 plus 2i root 2, and negative 2 minus 2i root 2. Yes? Um, okay, that's a good question. Hold on just a second. Um, so like, let's go back up here, all right? Let's go alternate universe. Somebody else had this at this stage, and they chose to try and do this, OK? They tried this, negative 2 plus 4 Ooh, minus uh, i times the square root of 16 uh, over 1, OK? Do you see what I'm saying they did? What am I, what am I saying that they did? Or they tried to add? Out of the 32. Does 32 have a factor of 2 in it? No. Yeah. But is this the number 32? No. What is it? It's the square root of 32. It's not 32. Okay. Uh, right? That's a funny word. Uh, so numbers outside of square roots and number inside of square roots, they're not in the same like dimension. Okay. They can't interact. To interact, either they both need to be in square roots, they both need to be outside of square roots, but you can't go between those two, okay? Because if I want to find out if this has a factor of 2, I need to find out what number it actually is, okay? Now, it turns out that this number, the square root of 32, does have a factor of 2, but we have to simplify it first so that like, it actually has a factor of 4, which has a factor of 2. Stay away from that. Don't try and cancel out things in square roots. Think about outside of square roots. They're not in the same dimension. They don't compare. We can't do that. We got to simplify it so that we have numbers outside the square root. Okay. Or now here's a weird thing to do. But I just want to show you. We could do this. Well, the square uh, square root of four is two. So two is the square root of four. Okay. Okay, now these two numbers could interact. But then we've got a problem here. This isn't in square root. You yeah, know, you don't want to do that. You don't want to go back into square roots usually. All right. So right, that's kind of weird. I won't leave it in the notes, but um, that is a possibility. So this is no good. Okay. All right. Um, So, what we learned, well, let's just go ahead and do this and we'll recap it here at the end. So, I'm going to give you a little bit less time on this one because there is just only the slightest difference here. Um, it's really enlisting the zeros. Okay, I gave you a little longer than I thought I would. Um, so, first, we, we don't have a starting point, so how do we find that starting point? Find the factors of? Okay. So find the factors of negative 14. Okay, let's do that. Seven, 14. Okay. All right, so when I'm up here and I'm talking, I do 
Like participation is measured by whether you're participating in me. All right. Okay. I appreciate you trying to help each other out. Here we are. We'll get through it here uh, pretty soon. So we have uh, one, two, seven, fourteen, and then somebody said one half. Why half. one half? Half, but one half. So why one half? So you take the factors of two. What do we do with factors of two? Underneath the factors. Underneath factors of fourteen. Okay. So you take the factors of fourteen and you put them over the factors of two. Well, what factor of two are these over? One. These are all over one. The factor of one of the factors of two is one. The other factor is two. So we do them all again, only we put them over the two. It's only if you have the under the leading coefficient. You need it to one so you don't have to do it. I don't get this part at all. Okay. <laughs> uh, so quickly, this uh, this guy right here is the constant. Right? And we take the factors of the constant over the factors of the leading coefficient. And we did that in the previous problem, right? Why doesn't it look like this? Why aren't there any fractions? Because the leading coefficient is 1. The only factors of 1, no, I shouldn't even say factors. The only factor of 1 is 1. Right? So we put, them, put all the factors of 24 over 1, and it doesn't change anything. But when it's 2, we write. 1 over 2, 2 over 2, 7 over 2, 14 over 2, okay? Let's just use our imaginations real quick and right over here kind of small, totally separate. We have 6x cubed. So I'm replacing a 2 with a 6 just so that we're all on the same page here. Okay, everything's the same except for I've changed this to a 6 instead of a 2, okay? And so how's that going to look? Well, we're going to have the factors of 14, 2, 7, and 14. 1 over 6. 2 over 6. Okay. 1 over 6. 2 over 6. Uh, 7 over 6. And 14 over 6. And over 2. And over 3. And over 3. Why? Because the factors All the factors six. of 6. 6 is 1, 2, 3, and 6. The factors of 6? 1 and 6. And 2 <laughs> and 3. Okay, we take all the factors of 14. And, and all the factors of 6. And all the factors of 6. And take all the factors of 14. So we go 1 over 2, and then 1 over 3, and then 1 over 2, and 2 over 3, and 7 over 3, and 7 over 3. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we'll do 1 over 2, 2 over 2, 7 over 2, 14 over 2. Okay, factors are 1 and 6 and 2, almost done. We do three, one third, two over three, seven over three, 14 over three. Okay, so it's a big long list. Made by the factors of 14 over the factors of six. Okay, every possible pair you can make between a factor of the constant and a factor of the leading coefficient, you make it into a fraction, okay? Um, okay, of course, that's not our that's not the problem here. I just wanted to show you like, all the factors. Not just one, and not just six, but one, six, two, and three, and any other factors of that constant, or that leading coefficient. So back here. Now we have this list of possible zeros. So if we were to test out all of these, uh, these possibilities, and none of them worked, we need to go into one half. And, Um, so then we can make a guess of think negative one, two, five, negative eleven, negative fourteen, two, negative two, three, negative three, negative fourteen, fourteen, zero, negative x plus one times two x squared plus three x minus fourteen. Okay. And then back to this. If you need to use a quadratic formula or 
factorable factor it, which I, it's factorable. So we get we could do uh, two x, uh, I think minus plus seven and x minus two, right? Okay. Keep in mind what we're trying to do here is find the zeros. What does it mean if something is a zero? What does it mean? We're trying to find the zeros. What's a zero? Makes it equal to zero. So we plug it in for x, and it gives us zero as the output. Okay. So this would come out to be equal to zero. Uh huh. And we set each of these equal to zero and solve for x. x equals negative 7 halves. Oh, well, look, that was on our list. Right? That turned out to be a 0. Okay. Uh, and then, so x is negative 1, x is negative 7 halves, x is positive 2. Um, any other questions? From this one, from the homework? Feeling better? Uh, yes? Number 20. Number 20. Okay, here's number 20. Uh, it says to, this is number 20, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, we're looking for zeros, right? If a number is a zero, we plug it in for x and we get zero. Zero for what? For x or for y? For y. We plug in for x and we get zero out for y, okay? Well, right here, that's where y is zero, right? And this graph represents every way that I can plug in any number for x, or at least any number between, let's say, uh, negative four to four, negative five to five, something like that. Okay, so it covers, mm, I guess it really covers more from negative two, a little bit past negative two, to a little bit past positive three, okay? So it's covering all the possible numbers you can plug in between a little bit past negative two, a little bit past positive three, what you would get out for y, right? So what do we get when we plug in, say, negative one into this function? It looks like zero, right? That's definitely gonna make my guess list. I'm gonna guess, for, I'm gonna guess negative one. What other guesses would you make based off of this graph? One and a half? Looks like one and a half. What if, uh, what if like one and a third was on there? Maybe just kind of keep it in mind. Yeah. One and a third. But what about zero? Would you, would you guess zero? Clearly not. You wouldn't probably guess one or four or any of those. But if it was one and a third, one and a half, one and three fourths, uh, you know, might keep it in mind, right? Because it looks like at one and a half or thereabouts, you plug in one and a half and you get y is zero. Does that make sense? Okay. So this graph is just to help us narrow down our, our list of possible zeros. When we take all the factors of the constant over the factors of the leading coefficient, then we look at this, fact, this, uh, this graph and narrow down our guesses. We're not going to guess five. We're not going to guess negative, uh, negative 15, right? Because that would be on the list but there are a few that looks like uh, 
those x values would give us uh, a zero. Okay. Danica, does that help? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So those are our zeros. You can see those are the answers. Okay. Um, let's just put our homework all in the middle. If you did a pink slip, or a pink slip, or the red slip up there on the board. <laughs> Hey, as I'm coming around and gathering up your homework, I want you to look up at the projectors. Uh, those three numbers are the zeros of some polynomial. You can see I wrote that right there. Pardon the interruption. If you drive a black Subaru Tribeca license plate 4 80721 a you need to remove it immediately. Please move your black Subaru Tribeca. Thank you. Uh, those are the zeros of some polynomial. I want you to figure out what that polynomial was that gave those as zeros. Don't frown. Don't give up already. Think about it for a sec. Uh, and if you're good, I'll tell you a story about somebody giving up, my daughter giving up. It was funny last night. I'll tell you that story. If you work together, don't give up. Think about it. Think about the process you just went through to find zeros. Try and reverse that process. here because I think we all came up with the same idea uh, at some point we we're on the same page okay if negative 5 was is a 0 then we could imagine that we did the work of finding the 0 and part of our polynomial was a factor of x plus 5 we set equal to 0 we solve for x and got x was negative 5 x minus 2 if we set that equal to 0 and solve for x it gives us 2 x plus 1 to give us a 0 of negative 1. Right? Now, that's the factor form of the polynomial. How do we get the standard form of the polynomial? Okay. I'm looking for participation with me. Yes? Distribute. Yeah, we just multiply all the parentheses together. Okay. Now, I'm not going to multiply them together. I'm sure that you can do that. If you're having trouble, then we can work on one, and that'll be great. But save time. Um, so let me give you another scenario, similar. I'm just going to tell you some zeros of a polynomial. Okay? Let's say one zero is 6, and another zero is 2 plus 3i. Uh, You guys have multiplied things together plenty of times. Oh, okay. Alright. I'm looking for the, the groups to kind of cool their group jets and you know become one big class group. Is that two plus? Two plus three i. Okay. Now, 
What you have to do with, with me here is imagine, imagine that you did the work of finding some zeros and you found a zero of six and a zero of two plus three i. Now what, how did you come up with a zero of two plus three i? Where did that come from? Whoa, you made a huge jump, that was awesome. Okay. Uh, we went from point A to point like D, so that was great. I didn't have to walk you through that. The quadratic formula. Apparently there was some quadratic at some point. We used a quadratic formula and we simplified it down and got 2 plus 3i. Now wait, if we used a quadratic formula, is that all we would have gotten? Does it seem like there's a zero missing? What zero? One of the minus, right? Two minus three i. Okay. This is what's called the complex conjugate theorem. Okay. The what? The complex conjugate theorem. Okay. Oh Why is it complex? Because there's two minus two. These. What are these numbers called? They're called complex numbers. Yeah, yeah. Yep, sure. Okay. Two plus three i, five plus seven i, six minus three i, all these things are complex numbers. Conjugate, you probably don't have any idea what a conjugate is. It's a very simple thing. These two things, these two things are conjugates of each other. Because they're opposites. So their middle sign is opposite. Their middle sign is opposite. How do you find the polynomial? That's the good question. Okay. First, let me let me phrase it this way. Okay. Let's say that there's some number um, a. Okay, some number a, and it'll say a is a zero of some polynomial, right? Then what factor would that come from? X minus a. X minus a. That's so beautiful. Okay. Now that works even if a is a negative number, right? So we can say 5 is a 0, x minus 5 is a factor. Believable? Yes. Understandable? Yes. Yes. Okay. Negative 2. Well, x plus 2 or x minus the 0. x minus negative 2. x plus 2, right? Okay, so that's going to help us figure out what we're supposed to do with these complex zeros. All right? A 0 of 6 gives us a factor of x minus 6. Okay. What about a 0 of 2 plus 3i? x minus 2 plus this. Okay, look at that for a second. Take that in. Think about it. While I erase. So do x minus 2 minus 3i. I'm going to help you out. I'm going to let you do more practice uh, on your homework. But right now, I'm going to help you uh, find a good strategy for this. First of all, I wouldn't do x minus 6 times this, because that would get messy. Okay? So let's distribute this negative in here. x minus 2 minus 3i. x minus 2 plus 3i, because the negative times negative is positive 3i. Okay? I'm going to multiply these together first. Okay. Let me show you what it's going to wind up being, and I'll show you why. Okay. Here's x minus 6. And when we multiply all these together, it's going to, like, get, when we actually do it, it'll look kind of messy, but then it'll simplify down to just this. x minus 2, right, this thing right here, squared. Plus three. I'll show you that. Okay. But do you see how simple that is? No, no, not how you get it. But do you see? Oh, yeah. Okay. The first, the first, this thing, this thing squared, right? And then plus a three. Okay. Well, let me show you how we get at least those two parts. Okay. If I group this together and treat it like one unit, then I can distribute it. Okay? 
x minus 2 times x minus 2. We're going to distribute these things together. Right? x minus 2 times x minus 2, that gives you x minus 2 squared. Okay? Let's skip all the middle stuff for a second and jump to the right, right to the end where we do negative 3i times positive 3i. Okay? So we got this middle step here. x minus 2 squared. Okay? All this middle stuff. How do you go? Wait. Oh, that's just, okay, never mind. We're good. Got Are you skipping it. it for a second? Got it. Okay, negative 3i times what? positive 3i. What's that? Wait, what? Negative, oh, sorry, this is going to be plus 9, not 3. Yeah. Okay, so negative 3i times positive 3i, what's that? Negative 3, negative 9, negative 9, i squared. Oh. Yeah, because what's i squared? Negative 1. Negative 1. Negative 9 negative 1, positive 9. Okay. Well, we're going to do all this middle stuff. What do you think is going to happen to all the middle stuff? All we're left with is x minus 2 squared plus 9. The middle stuff problem is going to get canceled out. Okay. So we have x minus 2 times 3i. That's x minus 2 times 3i. And then negative 3i times x minus 2, that's negative the same thing. So you got x plus or x minus two times three i minus x minus two times three i. Those are opposites. They they make what? Zero. You add them together, and they make what? Oh, because this x minus two times three i came from x minus two times three i, and then this one came from x minus 2 okay. times negative 3i. So we get a minus. Okay. Now that always will happen with conjugates. The middle part will cancel. Okay. And with complex conjugates, this winds up being a positive. Okay. And then we just keep going. Now that we've multiplied the conjugates together, we get x minus 6 times x squared minus 4x plus 4. That's from squaring this. Plus 9 x minus 6 times squared minus 4x plus 13. <laughs> uh, x cubed minus 4x squared plus 13x. Get the gas, let's go. No, no hold on. Break. Hold break. Red light, red light. Six times thirteen. Break them down. Six, seven, eight. Stop And then combine like ten. Hold on. I'm doing it maybe faster than you, but I'm not doing it any more amazingly than you will. You know what you're supposed to do. You multiply them all together. This is some old hat stuff. Okay? Old, old skills going on. Multiply two polynomials together. Distribute everything to just everything else combined by terms. That's all I did. I just did it faster than you. I'm better than you. Hey. I don't mean, like, in math, I mean, like, I'm a person. Better than all of you. <laughs> That's all I meant. It's a different one. Right? Oh, that, that was, that was uh, uh, I worked.